Okay, this video is in response to a viewer. His name is Sonodrone, and uh, he uh, watched my Game in Minutes video on uh, making a little game where you can knock blocks off a, a plane uh, as a sphere. And he had a few questions. Um, one of his questions, and the big one, has to do with collision detection. And collision detection is a hard thing to get just right, and you're probably never going to get it perfect <laughs> without a whole lot of work. Um, but here you can see, as I'm pushing this cube, as First off, you'll notice, and this is his question, is the sphere is going into the cube. We got a little bit of a going in. And also we got the sphere uh, is getting pushed back from the cube too, uh, which is fine if that's the effect you want. But if you don't want that, we'll go over that as well. I've given uh, examples on how to do this using dampening, but there's other options you can use as well. Um, if you do use dampening, do not put it all the way up to one, just put it, at, put it to 0.9, otherwise your sphere won't fall off the edge there. But we're going to go over uh, a few things here real quick. First things first, I'm going to go into top view here, and I'm just going to clone this one cube. And the reason I'm doing that is uh, because to see this effect, uh, I've got to be backing into an object, because as you can see, if I'm going forward, you can't really see that I'm going into that cube. I have to back up to it. So just throwing that behind my character so that I don't have to flip the camera around each time. So anyway, I'm going to pick the sphere here, our player, and I'll go over to the physics window here. He's got it says dynamic, and we got it as an actor, and he has collision bounds, and he has it marked as sphere, which is good, but you're going to get some issues uh, with collision. If you want to get a more accurate collision, you're going to want to use uh, convex hull. Now, convex hull is going to use it more processing power, so you're going to want to only use that on a few main items, usually your player, your main character, or anything else that, that you may need to. And basically, it's just, instead of just throwing an imaginary sphere or or a uh, box or cylinder around an object, it's going to try to use more the actual shape of the object. And even though this is a sphere and we had a sphere set, it's not quite the same. Um, now, we'll still have that problem when we start this up. You see this, the, the sphere going into that and bouncing off. Uh, let, let's take care of the bouncing off problem first. Um, by default, everything's got a mass set of one. So if you look at a cube here, you can see the mass is set to one. The sphere is also set to one. If we turn the mass up to say, let's say 10, uh, we should get less bouncing off. So there you go, see the bounce, the box or the, the sphere didn't bounce back at all. Um, but you know, higher you put that, the harder you're gonna hit the boxes too when you bounce into them. So uh, once again, trying to get the effect you want, whether this is a car or a person, you're gonna want different mass amounts. But I'm just gonna leave that at 10 so our player doesn't bounce off the box at all. But we still have the issue of going into the box. Once again, you can turn dampening up, and that will help with the bouncing. Um, and that's that's another way to do that. Mass is a good way to do it too, probably a better way uh, than the way I showed in the previous tutorial, although that's still an option there. But down here you have margin, right by default set to zero meters. And you can say we're from zero to one meter uh, and all uh, centimeters in between. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's uh, turn this up. I'm gonna do 0.2, which would be 20 centimeters. Uh, I'm going to hit P here. Now you notice right off the bat, uh, our sphere, our player, bounced off the floor a little bit there. That's because we're putting a little bit of a barrier or bounds around our player here. And if we go into front view here, go into wireframe mode, you see that the sphere is right on uh, our plane now. Which, now that we've added an imaginary uh, boundary around the sphere, it's going to cause it to bounce on that first little hit. Now I can grab it and I can move it up just slightly. Oops. And now, go back to our camera view. You know, I kind of drop into place rather than bounce up. So, in reality right now, our player is actually slightly above the plane that we're on. And that's, uh, that's an issue because of the the boundary there. It's not really noticeable in this game. So this isn't gonna be the best uh, technique to use uh, for every game, but in this game it should work. Uh, and I think we might still get a little going in the box here. Yeah, we're still going into the box a little bit, but not nearly as much as we were before. Let's try putting it up a little bit higher. We'll say 0.3, so that'd be 30 centimeters. Now if I go and I crash in the cube, I'm barely going into it. Now, once again, when it comes to collision detection, to get it perfect is going to be very hard. Uh, and Really, you just need to tweak these numbers till you find what works best for you and best for your situation. Um, 
So that's working, that's keeping us from really going into box. You could put up a little higher, but you really don't want it to be too high. Uh, and I'll show you why is because you have that balance around the box, really you're gonna start moving boxes uh, before you touch them. So like if I get close to that cube, see I'm moving it without touching it. So that's an issue there. Once again, all depending on the game, I'm just showing you the techniques I know to get them to work. They may not be the best, um, but each one might work better for a different scenario. So go ahead and play with that. Once again, put the mass up to prevent yourself from bouncing off stuff if you want that. I mean, you may want your sphere to or player to bounce off objects slightly because in real life, if you bump into something, you're going to bounce off it a little bit. Um, and you can put this bounds margin up, but now uh, we set it to convex hall. But once again, if we put it back to sphere, you'll notice that it's not going to do uh, as well of a job. You can see it's still going in there. So convex hall, but once again, you don't want to set every object to that. Mainly your player and maybe some other key objects, but that's going to use up a lot more processing power, especially if you get into higher detail models. Uh, right now, everything's pretty low uh, poly, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, another thing that the viewer brought up uh, is something I've experienced before, depending on how you generate the jump of a character, because he did set it so his spacebar would make it jump. Um, and his was, if you go off the edge of the map, he's able to jump back on. I, I can see that I can jump up a little bit, but I can't really seem to get it to be to a point where it's really uh, allowing me to jump back on. Um, and once again, there's different ways to do jumping, but I'm not really experiencing the issue that the, the viewer Sono Drone brought up. Um, now, once again, also depends on the boundaries, because if you have a larger radius for the boundaries and you have maybe a box boundary, you could probably hover off the side of the uh, plane a little bit more and still be considered on it because you have the imaginary uh, boundary around you. But since we're using the convex hull, we don't really seem to get that problem. But even when I had set the sphere, I don't think I was having that issue too much. So I hope this helped a little bit. Once again, collision detection is probably one of the things people ask me uh, quite often about when it comes to Blender because it's, it's not perfect. It's far from it. Um, and maybe maybe it's just me. Maybe I, I am not that enough experienced with it. I don't even know what all these options over here do. Uh, like here's a friction option. Uh, I haven't played with that at all. And really, uh, most of what I've played with in the physics settings here is just from playing around and tweaking it. I haven't actually read any documentation on it. Um, so uh, uh, that's the best way to learn a lot of stuff is just play around tweak with it. Maybe I should have read some documentation and be able to explain things better to you. But I'm just going off of my experiences. So once again, I really hope this helps. And please uh, watch my other videos at filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Uh, there's links in the description. And I hope that you all have a great day. And thank you for the question, Sonodrome. Have a great day.